There is no such thing as the perfect camera, unfortunately. It would be very easy if there was. I want to talk about gear. When was the last time that you saw a new piece of gear released, whether it's a new camera, a new light, microphone, audio processing gear, you name it, whatever it was, when was the last time you saw something and you wanted to buy it immediately? All of the time, new gear is being released. And as creatives, all we want to do is go out and buy it straight away so that we can make better videos or take better photographs or graphic design, whatever sort of creative field you are into. If you see something brand new, you want to buy it because we see it as something that will help us be more creative and make better things. But the reality is you probably don't need that new piece of gear because you probably already have something that is more than capable of doing the job you need doing. For example, new iPhones are released every single year. Do you need a new iPhone every year? No. New cameras aren't released as often. They're usually about every three, four, maybe even five years that they're upgraded. But do you need that new camera? Debatable. It is a common misconception that you need great gear to be able to make great videos or to take great photographs. And yes, to a certain extent, better gear will help you make better things. But there is also a very big argument that says you don't need great gear to be able to make good things. You can make incredible things, take great photos, make incredible videos with very simple gear. For example, what if I told you that this camera filming in me now is the Sony a7C and this camera filming in me now is the Sony ZV-1. The ZV-1 costs about $600, 600 quid in the UK. The Sony a7C is about 1800. Big price difference, you can probably almost buy three ZV-1s for the price of one A7C. So I've put these two cameras as close together as I possibly can so you can get the same sort of framing behind me and compare the two shots. However, the A7C is a baseline full frame camera. The ZV-1 is an entry level crop sensor compact camera. So there's a very big difference between the two. You got interchangeable lenses on the a7c the zv1 you are stuck with a 24 i think to 70 millimeter lens that just extends as you turn the camera on there's a big difference between the two cameras however you can see that they do actually match up fairly well so the point being you don't need great gear or expensive gear to be able to make great looking videos. If I didn't tell you that the camera filming now was the Sony ZV-1, no one would question it. No one would bat an eyelid. So the reality is, if you practice and you try to get better at your craft and learn new techniques and you focus on lighting and composition and your camera settings, so your apertures, your ISOs, your shutter speeds, you'll be able to make great videos and it doesn't matter what gear you use at all because when someone is watching a video they're not worried about what piece of gear was used to film it they're just worried about the content of the video when did that go off some cameras however will fit your needs better than other cameras and that's where all of the different choices come in because there is no such thing as the perfect camera unfortunately it would be very easy if there was a perfect camera, but then it'd be also a little bit boring because that one camera would do everything and everyone's videos would look exactly the same and it'd all just merge into one. With differences, it makes your choice a little bit harder as to what gear to go for. So for example, you might need a camera that shoots in 4K 60 or 4K 120. You might need 10 bit color. You might need better low light performance, or you might want a high megapixel count so that you can crop in when you're taking photos. There isn't one camera that is incredible at all of these things. Yes, cameras can do all of these things, no matter what camera you use, but other cameras are gonna be better at other things. And you have to make your choice as to which one is going to suit your needs the best. And because cameras suit different needs, they also suit different creators as well. So. For example, a lot of photographers tend to use Nikon or Canon. A lot of videographers tend to use Sony at the moment because Sony are 
really pushing the video game with the likes of the A7S 3 whereas Canon with the R5, that is almost the perfect photography camera. And yes, it is incredible for video as well, being able to shoot in 8K video, 4K video, and all of that that these cameras can do now. They are geared towards specific things. So for this reason, gear does sometimes matter. Sometimes you might need a very expensive anamorphic lens because the project you are filming requires the anamorphic look. Other times you might just need a ZV-1 with a fixed lens that just pops out as soon as you turn it on. And then when you turn it off, you can stick it in your pocket. You're gonna need a different gear at different times. For example, Hollywood aren't going to start filming all of their films with an iPhone but you can start filming your YouTube channel videos on your iPhone if that's all you need when you're starting out your YouTube channel. My screen has gone off again. Just to prove that you can use an iPhone to film your YouTube videos, this is shot on my iPhone 12 Pro and it looks really good. Now, yes, there are differences to using a proper camera. There's no depth of field, so everything looks in focus behind me but it's very usable and it looks very good. I'm using an app called Filmic Pro, which allows me to have full control over my shutter speeds, ISO white balance, and the aperture on an iPhone is fixed. So there's not a lot you can do about that, but to be able to have control over those things are things that you can't do in the normal camera app on an iPhone. So if you're gonna use an iPhone, I'd recommend using an app like Filmic Pro, just so you can start to learn the basics of filmmaking and get great looking video from an iPhone. It's mad. And Hollywood aren't also going to start filming all of their videos using natural light from a window. But can you start filming your YouTube videos like that? Absolutely, yes you can. Because it is free and you can do whatever you need to with natural light. Yes, there's limitations. You don't have full control over it. So you might want to upgrade to a light once you know what you're doing and once you know how to use it. Now those examples that I just mentioned about Hollywood using iPhones to film all their movies, obviously that is a very extreme example. I'm just trying to exaggerate the point that you can use very little gear. And I, I, I've probably repeated myself way too much in this video, but you can use anything to make great videos. Gear does not matter up to a certain point. After that, Gear does start to matter. It's just trying to find the balance of gear and not gear. Am I making sense? Let me know in the comments if I'm making sense. What do you use to film your videos? What do you use to take your photographs? Let me know in the comments below. But the same goes for photography as well because I took these pictures of a little Robin. I took them on a Sony ZV-1. I took them on this camera that I'm using right now and if I didn't tell you that I took them on a ZV-1, no one would ever know. No one would ever know, no one cares. All that matters is it's a good looking photograph and I really like it. And I think I like it even more because the ZV-1 was the only camera I had with me at the time and I managed to get the photo that I wanted. It's mind blowing what technology does. Technology is filtering down from all these expensive pieces of gear and it's filtering down into cheaper and cheaper pieces of tech all of the time. And that means that it is impossible now to not be able to make good stuff with cheaper gear. So all it takes when you are using that cheaper gear, maybe as I mentioned before, you're using your iPhone because you're just starting out on YouTube. If that's the case, put practice into knowing what goes into making great looking content. Maybe it's lighting, composition, mess around with your different shutter speeds because you can even do that on an iPhone and your ISOs and your white balance and know how to make a great looking image. And then when you get to using the more expensive gear, you're gonna know all of that straight away and your videos will take a huge jump to looking even better. And then there's even more things you can learn once you've got that new gear. So next time you're thinking of buying that new piece of gear, new lights, audio equipment, or a new camera, just look at the gear you've already got and think, do you actually need it? Because a lot of the time, we already have gear that suits the job we're trying to do. For example, I'd love to have the Sony a7S 3 with 4K 60 and 4K 120 
an incredible low light performance. But I've got a camera that shoots in 120 frames a second and 60 frames a second. Yes, it's in 1080, but I can still shoot those slow frame rates. I can do that job. I don't need 4K added on top of that. Would I like it? Obviously, yes, I would, but it's not needed. I'd like the Sony a7 IV for a slightly higher megapixel count in photographs over the Sony a7C, but do I need it? No. Pains me to say it because I really want it. I don't need it. Just look at the gear you've got because nine times out of ten it will suit the job you are trying to do. Um, I think I've waffled on for a little bit too long in this video and I might have repeated myself quite a lot as well, but... Let me know if you agree. Let me know what gear you use in the comments below. I love talking about gear. I could talk about gear for days. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. We just hit 4,000 subscribers on the channel, which is absolutely bonkers for my little channel. I can't get my head around that. that there's 4,000 people that have clicked subscribe. So thank you to everyone that does subscribe and watch the videos. Massively appreciated. I can't wait to see where the channel gets to in the future. I have big plans for it. So, yeah. Hit subscribe. Come and be a part of the community. See you in the next one. But my voice is... My voice seems a little bit... Uh, 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 seems a little bit grovelly today. And what do you think of the cap? What do you think of the cap? I had a bad hair day, so I just stuck a cap on. I can't decide whether I just look an absolute <laughs> in a cap. Or... If it looks all right. I don't think I suit hats, but we're going with it today. We're going with it.